Hi there, I'm Mike Gales for Everlast Nutrition. And in this video, I wanted to go over the very basics about your blood pressure. And I'm gonna start by reminding you that your body requires energy in order to function. And so where does your body get this energy from? Well, your muscles, tissues, and organs use a chemical substance called adenosine triphosphate, or ATP, which is created by your body with a little bit of help from the nutrients in the food that you eat and from the oxygen that you breathe. And what you need to know for the purposes of this video is that these building blocks for ATP creation are delivered to the cells of your body via your blood. Also, don't forget that your blood performs a host of other functions for your body, such as removing waste products like CO2 and lactic acid, and it also circulates heat. Not to mention it has the ability to clot to stop you from bleeding to death, and your blood also provides your body with an immune system. Now, in order for your blood to circulate effectively, a certain pressure must be maintained within the system. And when we're measuring your blood pressure, what we're actually measuring is the pressure that's exerted against the walls of your arteries. All right, so now we're gonna take a look at a few different types of pressure. First, let's take a look at your systolic pressure. Now, your systolic pressure is the pressure that's exerted against the walls of your arteries while your heart is contracting. And while your heart is squeezing, it's pushing more blood into the system, and this is gonna cause a rise in pressure. Thus, this is always gonna be the higher of the two numbers of your blood pressure reading. Secondly, we're gonna take a look at your diastolic pressure. Now, this is gonna be the pressure that's exerted against the walls of your arteries while your heart is relaxing and it's filling with blood. Now, while your heart's filling with blood, there's less blood within the system, and thus the pressure will be lower. And this is always gonna be the lower number of the two numbers of your blood pressure reading. And now finally, very quick, we're gonna take a look at your pulse pressure, which is the difference between your systolic and your diastolic pressure. So for example, if you have a blood pressure of 120 over 80, then your pulse pressure is gonna be 40. And this is indicative of how forcefully your heart is contracting. All right, so let's take a look at how to measure your blood pressure. Your blood pressure is measured in millimeters of mercury or MMHG. And as previously mentioned, your reading is gonna consist of two numbers, which is gonna represent the systolic pressure and the diastolic pressure. So here's how we get those two numbers. Your BP is gonna be measured by a device called a sphygmomanometer. Now try saying that three times fast, which is attached to a cuff. And now to measure your blood pressure, you're gonna sit with your left arm bent at about a 90 degree angle and place it on a table before you then place the blood pressure cuff around your arm. Now what the cuff is gonna do is that it's gonna momentarily inflate to cut off the flow of blood. And after a moment, it's going to deflate to let the blood flow once more. Now what's gonna happen while the blood flow is cut off? Here the machine's gonna do it, but your doctor can do the same thing by placing a stethoscope in the vicinity of your brachial artery, just below the cuff, to listen for what are called carot cough sounds. When that cuff begins to deflate, your blood's gonna start flowing once more. And because it's more turbulent than normal, it creates a sound that the doctor, or in this case, the BP machine, can detect. The beginning of this sound marks the start of systolic pressure and the end marks the start of your diastolic pressure. And so in the case of this particular reading, the machine registered a systolic pressure of 147, which remember was the pressure while the heart was contracting, and a diastolic pressure of 78 while her heart was relaxing. So why is blood pressure so important? Well, you can think of the human body as being a high performance race car that requires certain parameters to properly function. And just like a high performance race car, if you had a blocked oil line, then your engine's gonna die pretty quickly. Well, the same rule applies to the engine of your body, which is your heart. Now, hypertension or high blood pressure is often referred to as a silent killer because you cannot directly feel high blood pressure, but it can lead to stroke, kidney disease, erectile dysfunction, vision trouble, heart disease, and a host of other problems. And hypotension, on the other hand, is low blood pressure, which can lead to fainting spells, dizziness, or even organ failure. So what causes high blood pressure? Well, sometimes there really is no identifiable cause, as is the case with primary hypertension, which is a gradual increase in your blood pressure over the years as you get older. On the other hand, there's secondary hypertension, 
which is a sudden increase in your blood pressure, and this is usually caused by an underlying medical condition, such as kidney problems or adrenal or thyroid gland issues, or by medications, illegal drug use, or alcohol abuse. There are certain risk factors such as age and gender which are beyond your control, but smoking, being overweight, physical inactivity, and a poor diet play a significant role in controlling your blood pressure. And a quick note about your diet. High cholesterol can lead to atherosclerosis, which is a narrowing of your arteries. And this can have the same effect like when you pinch down on one end of a garden hose to increase the pressure. And also too much salt can increase blood pressure as well. Because when you eat more salt, your body retains more water, which will ultimately increase your pressure. So are you normal? Well, that's all relative. Optimal blood pressure is considered to be 120 over 80 but that's a ballpark figure. You may have a number that's slightly higher or slightly lower, and that may be perfectly normal for you. Okay, so let's quickly take a look at some classification of blood pressure ranges. Normal blood pressure has a systolic that is less than 120 and a diastolic that is less than 80. And unless you're having symptoms like feeling faint or dizzy, there's no real need to worry if your numbers are lower than these. If you have a systolic pressure between 120 and 139, or a diastolic pressure of 80 to 89, you may be considered pre-hypertensive. If you have a systolic of 140 to 159 or a diastolic of 90 to 99, you will be classified as hypertension stage one. If you have a systolic of 160 or higher or a diastolic of 100 or higher, then you'll be classified as having hypertension stage two. If you have a systolic pressure that is over 180 or diastolic that is over 110, then this should be cause for alarm and you should think about seeking medical attention as this category is considered to be a hypertensive crisis. A thing to make note of is that your blood pressure is constantly changing throughout the day, and it's the overall trend that's much more important than one particular reading. And to illustrate this fact, I wore a blood pressure monitor, which took my blood pressure every half hour for 24 hours. And all I really need to make note of here, at one point I had a minimum pressure of 103 over 43, which may seem low, but I was probably sleeping. And at another point, I had a pressure of 141 over 74, which may seem a little high, but I could have been playing a hand of Texas Hold'em and pushing my chips all in, which had an effect on my blood pressure. But overall, my average systolic was 123, which is right around the normal level, and a diastolic of 61, which may seem a little low, but I have no symptoms whatsoever, so for me that is normal. And my resting heart rate is usually around the mid 40s, and we'll get to why in just a moment. But the main thing to take note of here was that my overall trend was 123 over 61, and I feel absolutely fine, and so in my case, these blood pressure numbers are good relative to me. So finally, what about us fitness freaks? Well, fit people usually have a cardiovascular system that is much more efficient, and if you exercise regularly, you might notice that both your blood pressure and your resting heart rate are probably gonna go down. Now I just want you to keep in mind that there are no real symptoms of having high blood pressure and yet that high blood pressure could have catastrophic results down the road. So to sum this up real quick, check your blood pressure from time to time just so that you know where you stand. And just note that both exercise and a proper diet are great tools for keeping those numbers in check and for keeping you around as long as possible. This has been Mike Gales for Everlast Nutrition and if you like these videos then please click below to like or subscribe as we're constantly posting up great tips and cool ideas to get you into the absolute greatest shape possible.